So uh, this program said uh, about my experiences at life at CTS slash CHP. Many things happened before that, which I described a couple of weeks back in a different uh, settings. I would describe about what I did here. So the way I landed up here is because of uh, an encouraging letter from Mukunda when I was stuck at home doing nothing. And he invited me to visit uh, CTS because I had basically written uh, letters to various places in India that uh, can I uh, come and visit you and uh, probably get a job in future. And Mukunda was one of the few persons who replied. The other person was uh, in PRL, uh, Physical Research Laboratory in Ahmedabad, Jitan. And uh, so I visited uh, Bangalore for the first time at that instant. And uh, it was completely different uh, Bangalore than what we see now. So I landed up uh, in uh, Majestic and what we now have as a big bus stand over there is actually a past lake, so a big lake. And uh, at that time I decided to see what Bangalore is like and I, I enjoy walking, probably my history that I used to walk back and forth uh, to my school, two kilometers each way, carrying a big bag of books uh, every day. So that was no problem. So I got down at Majestic. I somehow had managed to get a map and I looked at the interesting places to visit. So Bull Temple uh, stood out. So okay, the road was there. All these buildings and construction were nothing was there, but I Okay, let's go to the Bull Temple. So from Majestic, I uh, took off uh, to Bull Temple. Yeah, it was, I think, uh, during the middle of the day, a little bit uh, hot along the way, but I think I had managed to find some water somewhere. So I walked to the Bull Temple, saw the place, then next place in the map, uh, Lal Bagh. So from Bull Temple, I walked to Lal Bagh. So that was... <laughs> It was not a, what you call a quick trip, but uh, somehow it, uh, walking was not a problem for me. So I went to Lal Bagh and saw that place also. And uh, somehow after that uh, um, came to IISC. For that, I must have taken some transport. I don't remember uh, what type. But that is the first uh, exposure to Bangalore that I uh, remember. And uh, here, Mukunda, um, gave me a very positive uh, response that yes, uh, we are interested in this kind of uh, people with experience and if you want to come here, you are welcome to join us. But at that time I had uh, also gotten offers uh, from CERN and uh, Wuppertal in Germany. So I told them that yes, I will first go and uh, finish this uh, postdoctoral positions and then uh, come back here. And uh, that remained true. So I uh, came back after finishing my position at CERN. But the situation here had somehow changed. So then they did not have anything there to directly offer me into physics or CTS. So the offer which was made to me was in SCRC the Supercomputer Education and Research Center. And the connection to that was that uh, SERC was supposed to get a Cray supercomputer. And I had enough experience in working with those uh, um, computers abroad. And so I will be able to do many things over here and even teach people how to use it efficiently, etc., etc. So I was given a appointment in SCRC, but I insisted that I am a physicist. You can't just put me over here and cut out from all the physics part. 
So they gave me a joint uh, position in uh, CTS. So I landed up uh, here, went to SCRC, and the first thing I discovered is uh, the Americans had applied sanctions and the Cray computer was not going to come here. So one of my incentives, or rather the IIS's incentive for hiring me was immediately killed. So what do I do? Well, I will do things within the constraints of whatever is available. And so I used to spend time here and there between CTS and uh, SCRC. Uh, neither of them had their own buildings. A new SCRC building, which we see today, didn't exist. The CTS building, which is now the Earth Sciences, did not exist. So it was some one table here and one table over there. So SCRC table was this uh, place, which is now the instrumentation department. There was one little table with a computer terminal over there. And the uh, CTS uh, table was actually in the veranda. So it has a corner place with two walls and the other two sides open. So that's where I uh, used to sit and uh, do my work, whatever it is. But it was clear that I cannot do any of the computational work which uh, I used to do. So I slowly drifted off uh, into doing more analytical and theoretical work. Of course, the computational work continued a little while because of my collaborations and the colleagues abroad who um, did all the handling of the computational jobs and I would contribute some code and things like that. And But that was bound to end in a few years time and that is what actually happened. Meanwhile, uh, this running back and forth uh, between one uh, little room here and one little uh, room over there continued till the new building uh, became operational. So then I had a room, whatever it is, with some furniture, not too many things, but uh, good enough for us to stay. And uh, that is where the CTS uh, uh, structure really started to grow. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, other things people ask me, particularly uh, in my uh, what you call probation interview, that uh, why are you not teaching? And uh, I told them that I have a position in SCRC. They don't have a student program. I have a joint appointment in CTS. They also don't have a student program. So there is no provision for me to teach. And somehow then convince them that they should give me some teaching assignment in the physics department, for which I had no other official connections. But that is how I started uh, teaching in physics. Uh, and most of the time, there have been courses which nobody else wanted to teach. So that was fine with me. I will teach anything uh, which classifies under the general program. And that has covered all kinds of things uh, over the years. So it's, I think started with nuclear and particle physics, but um, it goes into mathematical physics, quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, numerical techniques, uh, even all kind of uh, applications uh, of algorithms of various types, etc. And basically, I have taught lots of courses in uh, lots of different contexts. And uh, that situation changed only when um, the official recognition was given to CTS to um, admit students and I actually got a student in the very first batch which was admitted, that was Raghunath Ratabulwe. But it took some time and meanwhile I did my teaching job here and there in uh, different uh, varieties. So after uh, that, yes, one thing which I did in the old uh, CTS building is uh, take care of the infrastructure. So that is something peculiar, but uh, 
I found it necessary because what people were doing were essentially waste of time in uh, my own opinion and uh, given my IIT training I knew enough things about how to handle various uh, parts in a workshop. So in the CTS building uh, instead of waiting for some contractor or some uh, uh, what do you call a uh, carpenter uh, or an uh, electrician or something like that I just opened up everything myself. I have opened up electrical boxes, I have opened up computer boxes, I have uh, fixed boards, I have fixed lights, um, I have filled the distilled water in the batteries and uh, uh, all kind of internet business, the computer management became my uh, default because uh, I knew about at least operating systems. I was the default computer manager for uh, everything, doing uh, all kind of uh, internet connectivity, backups, whatever it is. I did all that uh, job uh, completely and I knew very well that this was not something which was required of me but I found it necessary because otherwise I would be wasting uh, my own time waiting for somebody else to come and meanwhile I cannot do my research work. The only thing which I kind of uh, kept track of is whenever I did that I got hold of somebody from the office or some student and uh, to show him what I was doing so the next time I don't have to do it myself I can tell them that you repeat whatever uh, I did in this particular context. So that way I have done many things even in this particular uh, building when it was uh, constructed. Uh, I know how various things work because I have handled it with my own hands and uh, that is uh, one part which uh, I think it should be kind of kept in mind that many times just relying on somebody else to do your job may not be the best solution and you should have some minimal skills um, to handle things yourself. I know experimentalists do many kind of things but I was not an experimentalist uh, but I somehow managed all those uh, things on my own and uh, the other um, thing which I want to mention which came up in many other discussions about um, my teaching and uh, grades. <laughs> so I always insisted that the students have to learn the subject from the basics and uh, that was not uh, good enough for many uh, students and those who thought that they will do this course with like a joy ride they had a miserable time uh, and uh, my exams or more like my assignments were also oriented in that particular fashion even including until this last semester if you want to solve the assignment you have to actually do some work before you can uh, find the correct answer you have to think about the correct approach and methods or whatever it is and uh, that has always uh, been my style and yes I have uh, taught many things and I have given uh, the full range of grades from what was S in the old days and now it is A plus to all the way to F and D whatever it is and uh, it depends on how much uh, effort the student put in maybe they write something on the paper but uh, my judgment is actually quite influenced by the direct interaction what they are able to explain if they are asked a question and uh, it will immediately show up in the answers uh, which are there in the exam which they write. So yes that uh, is a part of the teaching exercise uh, which uh, has been a kind of part of how I do my evaluation uh, and how do I train the students and 
those who managed to get through that kind of uh, work, they have done uh, well. So, in your highest cited paper, you get an FID, right? Hmm? In your highest cited paper on the batches, yeah. you calculate FID. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, what else? Uh, let me see. Yeah, and another thing which I disliked, and it is reappearing in uh, lots of different forms, is uh, bureaucratic rules. I have never respected them, and uh, whenever you have to deal with them, but whenever possible, I break them or bypass them, and that is the. Uh, reason I do not get along well with any administration. I have my own criteria about uh, how things uh, should be handled and if the priority is to just create some documents and uh, rules and make everybody follow them, it has not uh, agreed uh, well with me. And many of these things which I described, for example, um, in dealing with infrastructure, I was just trying to bypass lots of things uh, which uh, were routinely accepted by the others. But to quote one example, today Avishkar wanted to come here at 2.30, he was stopped at the gate that he doesn't have an invitation letter. And the security guard wouldn't let him in. So then uh, he went back home, communicated whatever it is, and then I had to tell Sarvana go and uh, pick him up from the gate. So these are the kind of rigid things which has no meaning. And uh, they have to be broken. And I uh, have kind of found my own solutions uh, in many situations. Dealing with this national quantum mission is an exercise of the same type. There are some bureaucrats trying to tell you uh, what is important and I know that they are wrong. And not many people will stand up and say that you are talking nonsense. But I have to uh, do that because if nobody tells them, they will always assume that they are right. And uh, that is... Uh, struggle but uh, it is fine with me i have learned very what you call important fact very early in my life that if you have nothing to lose nobody can win against you and uh, i have basically designed my life so that i have nothing to lose and then I can do whatever I want. And yes, things will uh, happen in future also, but this attitude probably will remain. It's not going to change. So, yeah. Well, these are some of the things about life at CTS now. Anything else which I can add? No, I think that's about it. Okay, thank you.